In this quick video, I want to look at how we can read data in from the console using Java. Now, printing out to the console is very easy. We simply say system.out.print or print line and give it a value to print, whether it's an object and it calls its to string method or maybe a string itself like this. And there is a system.in. However, it doesn't really provide you what you want. It's going to be used, but not in the way that we might think. That's because what we'll need is actually a buffer reader, or maybe something similar to it, like a scanner, in order to access the console. Now, to use something like buffer reader, we're going to need import java.io, and we could load the whole library like I am doing here, or we could specifically only say buffered reader. And then we'll need to create a new buffered reader. I'm going to call my buffered reader br. It's going to say it's going to equal new buffered reader. Buffer reader is going to want to take a value into the constructor. Specifically, we're going to need to give it an input stream reader. So instead of creating an object and passing that in, I'm just going to create an anonymous object here in the constructor by saying new input stream reader. We never need to use it directly. So being able to not have to define a name and keep track of it that way, it works okay. So we're saying input stream reader, we're passing in here system.in, that's our stream. Now we have that reader. Now we can do a buffered reading process. Anytime we tend to do input, especially from Java, we want to make sure we put this on a try catch block. That's because a lot of times we'll throw an IO exception. So we'll specify try, and I'm going to go ahead and write out the catch while I'm at it. And we'll just specify we're going to handle this later. Now, of course, in a real application, we would take the time and do a proper handler for this. But just for a simple demonstration, we're not going to worry about it too much. Now, what else are we going to need to do? Well, we need to have an input variable based upon what we're going to capture. And specifically, I want to look at capturing a string. So I'm going to come up here, specify string. I'm just going to call it my data. Inside of it, I'm just going to put default data. It's just something I can use later on. Now to read this, I'm going to put my data equals br dot. And so now I'm referencing my buffer reader, and now I want to read a line. And I'll do it like this. Okay, so it's really simple. I'm calling my buffer reader. I'm calling a method called readLine. What it's going to do is it's going to look for information to be entered in. And by reading a line, we're going to read the whole line, whatever's in there, and put it into a string. Now, outside of my try catch, I can do something like system.out.println and specify my data. You might say, well, what good is that going to do? Well, it's going to now print out whatever was entered in, kind of echoing it back. Now, if I see default data, that means that I had an error somewhere in my try catch before I got to load up that data. So that's the reason why I put the default data in there. It gives me just a little bit of a hint. Now, I could put something else in there if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. Now, if I go and run this, it prints out hello world, and then I'm just stuck with this kind of blinking cursor. And the reason why is that I had a print line, that's fine, but it's waiting for me to enter information. If I don't know that, it's just going to sit there. Now, if I print hello and hit enter, it takes that enter, you see the hello that I entered, and then it prints it back and it exits. But I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And so therefore, I had that little bit of an issue. 
So the buffer reader is different than some languages like Python, which in an input statement where you go and you give a prompt, we need to make sure we define a prompt and display it. That way a user knows to do something and isn't just looking at that little blinking cursor. So here, right before my read line, still inside my try catch, Notice that now I'm going to say, hey, please enter a string of data. If I go and run this again, you'll see my hello world, just as you saw and expected. Please enter a string of data. And I can put in 1313 13, Mockingbird Lane. Notice I have spaces in there. I've got letters, I've got numbers, I've got capital letters, got lowercase letters, kind of really mixing it up. If I enter, it comes and returns everything. So it reads a whole line. And Buffer Reader has that nice ability because of that read line, I can read the whole thing. I don't have to worry about getting one set of numbers or trying to get an integer. I can take this data, then I can parse it out if I need to. So it has some nice flexibility with it. Now, this is not the only way to read data, and you might prefer other methods. In fact, using a console is not the preferred method for most applications nowadays. But this works when we need to do it, and is great for testing out simple little applications and testing out classes and stuff. So this is a great way to handle reading information from a console.